The Sierra back country is so beautiful. So pick a side and see and learn. If you had an engine failure, putting it down safely out here is totally reasonable. You could push the nose down and dive if you had to. Yeah. Okay. There's a bear on the runway here, you guys. Watch your speed. Let me drag it in. Your speed. I got it. Oh yeah, this is all lift right here. Woohoo! I'm Eric, a private pilot based in Los Angeles. Join me and my family on our aviation adventures throughout Southern California and beyond. Mountain flying is some of my favorite kind of flying to do, but it can be dangerous if not done right. So this adventure trip put on by Jason Miller of the Finer Points was the perfect way to build proficiency. In my last video, I dodged some thunderstorms and flew into Truckee Tahoe Airport near Lake Tahoe, California to join up with about a dozen other aviators and flight instructors to start a weekend of aviation fun. Jason leads instructional presentations about mountain flying and the whole group enjoys a couple days of learning, socializing and flying while camping right at the airport. The Sierra Nevada mountains have always held a special place in my heart. I've only had a chance to explore some of these amazing mountains on the ground, but I'm drawn to them. As a cinematographer, maybe I connect with Ansel Adams' stunning landscapes of the region. Or maybe it's the fond memories of our winter ski and summer hiking trips to Mammoth. But these mountains are always calling. The main event is a flight from Truckee, Tahoe, through the mountain passes all the way to Mammoth Yosemite Airport, with a focus on safely flying below the peaks and dealing with high density altitude. First, Jason and some of the other CFIs reviewed high density altitude airport operations. In a nutshell, taking into account the airplane's severely decreased performance on takeoff due to the high altitude and hot temperatures. So that's how we know how they got the Imperial probe droid. It was on Hoth. It was like when they were on Hoth and Hoth goes out to scout yeah. for like something came in. Yep. They picked up their transmission and it was like an Imperial probe droid. We got uh, Ben Burt working over in the tower, tower over there. Okay. He's a sound designer we'll for like all the inbound. Star Wars there. You oh, nice. the <laughs> Just a few weeks earlier, a Cirrus was involved in a fatal accident due to high density altitude and gusty winds at this very runway. Clear for takeoff on runway 20, and we'll do that left 270 and uh, southwest of runway 291. Thanks, sir. Windy conditions can easily create downdrafts that the airplane can outclimb in the high density altitude environment, and the terrain off the departure end of runway 20 rises fairly quickly. I'll just stay down here a little bit. There you go. Off, That's VX. After, departure, the, after you cross the end of the Easy. runway, flight right turn over the bypass bridge of the highway. That's getting better there. Course, that was free, right? Crazy. I mean, I'm climbing at 600 feet per minute, but it doesn't look like it because of the terrain. You know what I, I mean? I know, yeah. It's optical. It's rising. Yeah. It's wild. It's wild. All right. I think I can, I can do this. Oh, oh sh I'll just leave departure. it for now. A distraction like this on a critical high density altitude takeoff could easily start a chain of events that could lead to an accident. So I always try to keep the number one priority of safely flying the airplane over everything else. Want me to put it back? Back roger. Yeah. Left I'm just not gonna remain south and left right now. Two right now. I knew the flight to Mammoth through the unforgiving mountain passes would be a challenge. And flying over the rugged terrain, I can't help but constantly think, what if the airplane has a problem? This area, there's quite a few little meadows and fields you could put down. If you had an engine failure, putting it down safely out here is totally reasonable. And then you're here for at least 24 hours. Now you want me to go? Yep, that's yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. Throughout the weekend, we listened to talks and demonstrations by expedition physician and CFI Howard Donner about surviving a night out in the wilderness. And camping at Truckee, we got a real taste of the wilderness. All right, there's a bear on the runway here, you guys. He's way out there. I can barely see him. Oh, now he's I knew the rest of this flight was going to be an amazing learning experience. But first, if you watch this channel, you know I love learning new things. We're lucky enough to have Skillshare be a sponsor of this video, and it's my pleasure to be able to recommend this excellent online learning community that has thousands of classes for creative and curious people. You may remember in the past, Goomba and I used Skillshare to design and 3D print a GoPro battery caddy. Y'all know I love customizing my electronics. Not now, R2. 
Dagobah is still far away. <laughs> so we continued on with Mark Frauenfelder's Introduction to Arduino Creating Interactive Projects class. We've already learned how to control lights and servos and are on our way to building fun electronics projects. You too can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. We were on our way to Mammoth, but flying mountain passes isn't something to be taken lightly and requires specific knowledge and training with an experienced flight instructor. Jason covered a lot of technique in the morning briefing, and it was time to put it into practice. Normally, if we were crossing this ridge, right, we'd probably go this way a little bit, so we crossed it at a 45. Let's do that. We learned about crossing ridges on a 45 degree angle, so a turn towards lower terrain in case of bad downdrafts would be easier. We also learned to visualize the winds flowing like water over the local features to imagine where the lift and sink would be. If we feel bumps here, it's because we're in the whatever ripples exist after the road, you know, the water comes okay, over. I guess I could turn to lower terrain over there. Yeah, totally. There's a valley right here, one o'clock. You could push the nose down and dive if you had to. Yeah, okay. The deeper we got into the mountains, the more critical it became to fly on one side of the canyon and give ourselves outs in case we encountered heavy sink. So pick we're a we're side, right? So like, you don't necessarily want to go down the center of the valley. So pick a side and see and learn. We have a lot like, out. I feel like it's coming from over there. Oh yeah, this is all lift right here. Yep, yep. That's just nice, look at that. It's just taking us. Yeah, I'll just let it take us. Yep. That's fun. We chose wisely there. Lift all right. Yeah. Yep. Feels awesome. Woohoo! That lift. It's a little bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were getting close to Mammoth, and I was really looking forward to seeing it from the air. But I was really enjoying the incredible sights of the Sierra Range. Check the other side for updrafts. Want to check it? Woo! A little bouncy through here. All right, and in this case, you're out as forward. Okay. The Sierra backcountry is so beautiful. It's hard to describe the grandeur of these mountains. I wondered if anyone had ever set foot on the shores of some of the lakes or walked in the grasses of some of the meadows. And I wondered how few people have ever seen this area like we did from the air. Flying over this area renewed my humble appreciation for our delicate relationship with the wilderness, which is simultaneously beautiful and wondrous, yet completely unforgiving. We made it to the eastern side of the range and into the Owens Valley. Hey, check it out. We are just buzzing Mammoth Mountain right here. The brown stuff up there, yeah. like that's all skiable bowls. Ah, uh, yeah. It's so cool to see it from up here. Side, there's like a whole backside to it. Uh, you can see the top of the gondola there. We had been flying in a conga line with several other planes in our group that were circling up at Mammoth Airport. And flying with everyone who I'd hung out with throughout the weekend was an all new and amazing aviation experience for me. I really wanted to have a nice landing to impress Jason, since the day before, my touchdown was a little sloppy. Mammoth traffic, Jerry 631 Bravo Whiskey is on a final runway nighter. Mammoth. What's your speed? Let me drag it in. your speed? I got it. Nice. Landed this plane before? If you like this video, come join our Patreon membership and get exclusive perks like bonus content, our own Discord chat server, Zoom hangouts, and merch discounts. Thanks for coming along on the journey with me.